In a nutshell, we produce the worst product. Yeah. Women parenting children by themselves mm -hmm. with no positive male role models in the household, no consistent male figures, it produces the worst product. Welcome back, family. I'm your host, That Ball Brother. And today we're going to slide over to Off the Porch. We did an interview with Miss Love Dorsey, where she talked about black men and women, relationship dynamics, and her controversial stance regarding holding women accountable. Let's get into it. It's it's a it's a trigger for women. Yeah. Like if you start talking about accountability, if you have, because you know, I have live videos and you know, reels I posted where I'm I'm just talking to the media. I'm just giving them game on certain stuff about us as women. And it, it always trickles back to helping us into like females. But when you're not woke, you know, that third eye ain't open. You don't really see it that way. You see yeah. it like, oh, she for the dudes or what's the verbiage that they use? Oh, she'll pick me. Right, you know what right, I mean? Yeah. They think I'm just talking just to appeal to dudes. But yeah. my content really breaks generational curses. Like I speak on stuff that if we start really putting this to the forefront of our conversations, it'll change the dynamic on how we treat one another, how we're raising our children, how we look at ourselves in regards to how we apply ourselves and focus on certain stuff in our life. And see right there, she makes a very good point about accountability. A lot of people tend to get triggered when that word comes up because no one wants to be at fault. We understand that, we get it, right? But what she's saying is that in order for, in order for men to understand their role and responsibility in this situation, in these dynamics, in these relationships, there's an accountability that has to be had, right? When she speaks to men and give them advice on how to deal with women, rather than, and to her point, rather than women taking offense to it, understand that it starts with us. I know that may, you may not want to hear that, but it does because men are supposed to be the inherent leaders of the relationships right of the communities if the men aren't right something that i brought up in previous videos then it all trickles down see women want to claim that they want men to be leaders and step up and be men but in order for men to do that they have to be held accountable they have to understand what it means to be a man then the, the leadership all that comes along with that so what she's saying is by educating men she's making things better for women but because a lot of folks are in their feelings a lot of times and don't want to hear that or don't want to be told the dark truth of what they've been dealing with and how they've been behaving and how it's having a negative effect on their outcome and relationships they want to fall back and start pointing fingers and getting attitudes and, and getting in your feelings about oh you can't talk to us like that you can't tell us how to do this that and the third if men get right everything else works out fine too women will catch up and get right too because you have to have that stable leadership the foundation of the community requires that the, that, that the men are men that the men are leadership in, in their leadership role and able to fulfill that duty all we hear all over the internet is if a man leads a woman will follow but a woman won't follow shady leadership right okay understood in order for men to become leaders they have to be groomed that way they have to be shown the way to be that if she's pointing out things that some women do wrong or the games that some play then what's wrong with that the people that are affected by that are the ones primarily who are out here playing games which again goes to the accountability thing. You don't want to own the fact that you're part of the problem, you know? And as as a man, I can own that, that I've been part of the problem in previous relationships and men can st have to stand here and be accountable too. We've made mistakes, we've done things, our behaviors have brought on all kinds of drama that we didn't want, but you got to own that if you want to see better in your relationships. You can't keep pointing your finger to everybody else and removing yourself from the equation. We're part of it too, what you allow, how you treat, how you act, what you what you tolerate, all of those things play a role in how your relationships will go. Um, a lot of the things that you are talking about is, you know, like in terms of like men growing up in the house, only being raised by a woman yes. and like the ways that that affects yes. us and, and our they hate. I just had to, um, I had to delete a comment off my page. And, and I'm, I'm gonna tell you something, when people trigger, you can just see it. They can't see it, but you can see it because they go on and on in their comments and in their dialogue with yeah. stuff that you never even said. But when I talk about this whole single mothering mm -hmm. pandemic that we in, mm -hmm. and you know, I, I understand history and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll touch on that a little bit, but when I go to talking about this and how it produces the worst product, ooh, everybody just starts trying to defend their personal single mom. Right, and it's right. like, if you look at the bigger picture, statistically, it is a fact, regardless of how many ways you try to 
discredit or chop down the statistics if you just look around your neighborhoods your low income areas areas where it's predominantly you know us yeah right you can see the outcome of the fucking pro you know what i mean like yeah. you can see the shit that's going on yeah, no, so it's just sure. when i talk about that it, you know it's is highly triggering for women it's a it's a particular subject that like people damn near want to fight by yeah but in a nutshell we produce the worst product yeah. women parenting children by themselves mm -hmm. with no positive male role models in the household no consistent male figures it produces the worst product yeah. it is you know a a big blame for a lot of young men going straight to prison fresh out of their teens straight into the prison system yeah. it is a big part of the blame for how a lot of our youth are doing in school yeah. because in order to learn you got to be able to manage your emotions you got to be able to focus you got to be able to get out of playtime and out of worrying about what your mama said right. and getting out into the world and getting a sense of your social skills a sense of self things like this and you know they just don't want to hear it but it's a fact no for sure because a lot of times as far as black men the first time that we even get authority from a man Come on. is from the police yep you know what I'm saying? Or, or or from an authority figure that you don't even know, so you don't know how to respect them, you yep. know, or anything. So a lot of times cats will crash out because either it's a scenario where shit, a nigga like in the streets then, you know, crossed them or, yep. or then said something crazy to them and they don't know how to react yep. to that. You know what I'm saying? In a as a whole, our people, we are suffering greatly by us just thinking we're doing it the right way, yeah. right? And when you when you talk about what you just said, being raised for all your early 17, 18 years, and you're only seeing how a woman runs the house, right. how a woman handles things when conflict comes up, yeah. how a woman is with her emotions. You're never allowed any influence from yeah. a male, yeah. whether it's your father or anybody that has consistent say-so over you. You grow up as a man with bitch ways. Yeah. Womanly way. Yep. And it's something that, you know, even men get triggered because they think about, okay, I was raised by a single mother, but I ain't no bitch. Unless you got out right. in the world and you got around men and you rub elbows with grown men doing right. some positive shit, you have some female race. You have some tendencies and some psychological things going on that associate more with the woman than they do with the man. And that's a good point. Even if you want to dismiss the stats, you could look around your community and see for yourself. A lot of single parent households that produce black men or black children tend to see little black boys getting in trouble, going to jail, getting on the wrong side of the law. And what's really unfortunate is that his point when he said that the first interaction with authority figure, male authority figures, tends to be with the police. And when she said you don't have consistency in the household, then the child's going to start to pick up what they see. You can't deny that. If a child's around a particular parent all the time, it does not surprise anyone when a child is very being as impressionable as they are, doesn't take on some of the qualities of that single parent. And while it's unfortunate that we have single parent households in the first place, what's even worse is that they wouldn't be that way if we black men stand up and take our rightful place in the households that we create. No, nah, because it, it definitely triggers on both sides for the women defending themselves on how they're raising these boys. Yep. And then as a man, I mean, shit, you don't want to hear anything saying that you're anything less than being a, a man. man. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Um, so something that was interesting for me where I came to the realization with this, my therapist broke it down for me. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up single single parent mom raised me mm -hmm. but then i happened to have my, my granddaddy helped raise me too and i there was like go. really close to him so i was breaking down some scenarios to my therapist like a couple of different scenarios i was going through with some folks and after i broke them down she asked me she said how would your granddaddy have handled yep. those scenarios yep. And I answered it and it was different from how I handled Because you the was scenario. doing what your mama would do. Exactly. You, it's, 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 it's indisputable facts. And it's yeah. sad, I have to say indisputable in front of the yeah. word facts, but it's just, it's true. As human beings, the way we develop, if anybody that has ever worked with children, they know we model, right. we pick up, we get our program and our paradigms, our beliefs, our inner beliefs on how we behave. Because what you know don't control how you act. Right. It's your actual beliefs that are programmed into you. Right. And when all you've seen is a female running stuff, and you gotta think about it, nowadays it's households 
full of nothing but women. Right. The mama being told how to be a single independent mama by her mama. Yeah. Her mama don't got no man, but she got some sisters and some aunties. Yeah. They all run the family. These wow. the opinion leaders. They make all the decisions. And then you got two, three, four, five young teen boys being raised by them. See, going back to what we said in the beginning is understanding the importance of accountability. In order for men to under to be better men, they have to understand how they're playing a part in the situation. We're not going to play this game of acting like we don't know why there are so many single parent households or single mothers out there because single mothers don't get that way by immaculate conception. OK, it happens because black men are being irresponsible and we have to stop being that way. We have to understand that, again, we are in control of the narrative if we choose to stand up and be in control of the narrative. You can't keep saying, oh, well, I don't want to date single mothers. I don't want to be around single mothers. But when we not every man, obviously, but we are creating single parent households. And you have these two dynamics where the men are feel like they're innocent. They're not, they're not doing anything wrong. And the women feel like they're not doing anything wrong. Everybody think they're doing it. As she said, everybody think they're doing it the right way. And it's only making things worse. Yes. Women have a responsibility in the single motherhood as well. But again, we tend to focus on this channel talking about what black men can do to be better black men. You know, like I said earlier, I'm gonna touch on it a little bit and this bothers a lot of people, but I gotta say, I understand a lot about history and where our people come from. When you don't understand that there was an agenda to economically castrate black men, to separate our households, to make it where welfare programs actually solicited and was lustful looking to women as long as they kept the men away. Well, you don't understand that this is where this shit stems right, from. Right. And this is just a part of it, but this is where it stems from. You, When you don't understand this, you will think that as a single mother, I made the decision to raise my children by myself. Like I made that conscious choice. No, you didn't. You was programmed and your mama was programmed and anybody before you that did this from a happy space like this is the thing to do bragging about it advising other women under them that girl keep your baby it don't matter if he around you could do it by yourself y'all y'all don't understand you psychologically programmed because in the late 1960s early 1970s there were governmental programs that were put in place for welfare it was put out there this was welfare yep. this was to help low income and poor families mostly us yeah right yep. and so when these programs came about they made it where you get food stamps, cash assistance, housing, all these things. Yeah. But one of the main stipulations was you cannot have a male in the household. Yeah. The other part of it is they would send around social workers, which some people know this still goes on today. But when these programs first started, this is one of the main things. Social workers would come out after they giving you these benefits to make sure you don't have no man in the household. Right. And so the idea is if you, if you, if you mix the crack epidemic, you mix where we were coming from, from like, the industrial revolution and the deindustrialization, like just if you can go through history and just educate yourself, you will see where, wait a minute, we not just doing this and making these decisions to have these babies by ourselves because this is something that we thought about, thought it through, looked at the product, it's producing a good result. We are psychologically manipulated yeah. and programmed to believe that this makes sense. Yeah, nah. And this is why every time I try to have real conversations about this shit, it triggers people to the point where they will talk about everything but the shit I'm saying, right. the root of it. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, nah. If you try to have a conversation with people nowadays about co-parenting, about how rights have changed for women mm -hmm. and we are able to be independent if you want to be or if that's the lifestyle that you choose, why are these programs still operating with the same rules? Because back when they first started, women, we didn't have as many rights as we have now. Right. Our rights have progressed. Why do you still have it where we can only get this help without a man when, especially for our people, women are participating, black men, women participate more in the labor force than black men. Do you see what I'm saying? We're, we're advancing. Shit is going on where it's different. So even if you try to go into the conspiracy area, you still can't make it make sense as to why are the rules still the same on getting this assistance and these governmental programs? Why do I have to X my baby daddy out, the father out of the picture, whether we together or not? Why does it have to be just me by myself making under a certain amount to get these programs? It just shows that it did what it was supposed to do. It programmed our mindset to believe that this is the way to go. Right. So now we're defending single motherhood. 
as older women, you see them telling younger women and encouraging their younger family members, like, girl, if he don't want that baby with you, you can just have it. You will be all right. right. We will help you. I mean, and then when you look at what's happening with our young boys, it's not working. Yeah. It's not the lessons that we think we teach in niggas by keeping children that they don't want, that they're not prepared to be in a household and lead and help take care of. It's not, it's teaching us and the children more lessons than it's teaching them. Yeah. You know, it's not often that you hear someone really get into the weeds when it comes to these kind of conversations. Yes, as men, as women, we have responsibilities and take accountability in our own uh, behaviors that create these scenarios. However, we cannot deny the fact that there are programs in place that were designed initially and still to some degree, to a great degree today to keep the black household separate. I remember watching a documentary recently where they talked about where they showed examples and video of these social workers going around to the houses to make sure there was no men in the house. Otherwise, you lose your benefit. And just think about that for a second. That there, there's a program that the government gives out that incentivizes you being by yourself, having multiple children, and the more kids you have, the more benefits you get if you allow the, the government to be your fiance and eventually your husband. Think about that for a little bit and how that doesn't make any sense. Yet this is what we've been indoctrinated to believe is the way to go. Now, our behaviors as men and women haven't helped this situation because women are having babies, men are having babies, not being accountable on either side. And that creates the, 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 the fertile ground for programs like this to flourish. But just think about the fact that that program still exists today, maybe not in its true original form, but the lasting effects of it are still apparent. And again, we have a way to turn this around. We can stop allowing situations like this to separate the household, men taking responsibility, women taking responsibility for what they have created and coming together. Or if I don't want to have that kind of lifestyle, I'm not ready for a family, then you need to move accordingly. Protective sex, not having sex with any and every person you see. Moving in a way that shows you're being responsible for the fact that you understand that if you decide to go down that road, you're taking a potential risk of putting yourself in a scenario that you say you don't want to be a part of rather than leaving the child to be in a single parent household when all you have to do is just decide, you know what, it's not for me. I'm going to leave it alone. And why and why do you why do you think, though, that like women will tolerate so much more like than a man? Like, I'm going to so be brutally honest with you and the ladies that may watch this. <laughs> When we get with dudes, we be knowing what y'all are. Meaning like we know clearly the same flaws that y'all know y'all got, yeah. that you won't speak on, that's hid mm -hmm. behind your ego or the designer or the car or, you know, the dick, whatever, yeah. right? We yeah. be knowing. So a lot of times a bitch be knowing up front, this dude got these kind of tendencies, mm -hmm. but we want a relationship image so bad, mm -hmm. right? That we will go along with that. And then if you mix the self-esteem issues, the lack of a father figure in our childhood for a lot of us as women, we when you don't have that growing up, there's something in you as a female. And this is just a part of femininity that you long for that masculine companionship. Yeah. So a lot of times we can see all up and down, this nigga is never gonna live up to what I want him to be, but God damn, it feels so good as we connect, as we fuck, as I am able to say this, my peoples, yeah. this is something I didn't get. That's a topic that doesn't get discussed as much as I think it should. The fact that a lot of times we get into these relationships because we're just trying to find something to cling on to. We're staying in relationships that we know don't serve us because we don't, A, we're afraid of being alone, and B, we're believing and hoping that somehow this person may change. And as someone who has been through a relationship where I stayed around way longer than I should have, in hopes that I could change her, get her to see how she could be a better woman and only to set myself up to get more heartache, frustration, stress, emotional trauma. We have to be, learn to be honest with ourselves when you see the writing on the wall, when you recognize that this isn't working, it's okay that it's not working. You should never force yourself to be in a situation or a scenario that doesn't benefit you. If you have a vision in your mind of what you were looking for in a relationship, you have to be honest with yourself first to recognize that this is what you want. And you gotta be honest with the person you're with if they're not able to give you that, if they're not able to meet you where you want them to meet you at. But being honest and upfront is the key. Clinging on to something 
that's not benefiting you and you're only you're only there because you're tolerating it you're only setting yourself up for potential heartbreak misery and resentment something that none of us really want but we choose to take that path because we feel like it makes the best sense in that moment because we don't want to lose that great feeling that we have it, it, it starts with your programming. Your programming is your upbringing. And then after your programming, it's your life experiences that determine how you are. For females, when you are raised and programmed as a child, that men have a certain authority and power and value, right? There is a certain part of you that the femininity comes out automatically when it is men in general, especially a man that you respect and you love and that you're taking on a relationship with. So for me, the dynamic comes out natural around my man. So when I'm on my platform, when I'm doing my music, when I'm doing my boss female shit, that is that. When I'm with him, it is a whole nother realm and it's programmed into me. It is something that, again, it comes from my upbringing. I was raised with a father in my life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I ain't never really been out here looking for um, fulfillment or my that little girl in me gotcha. isn't going through the world looking for a certain, lock in with a man for the wrong reasons or to dominate a man to make myself you know feel better yeah it just comes natural and you know i tell this to women when i do zooms and stuff on femininity you have to understand that in order to attract a man that matches you being in your feminine space mm -hmm. at all times in regards to your family life you have to understand it starts with you and if you're tapped into your true self because right. a lot of what's going on with us it goes back to the same thing i said about us as single mothers parenting right, when you yeah. raised by nothing but women right it feels so uncomfortable to have a man exert any sort of authority or control over you mm -hmm. so there are a lot of women that they struggle to build relationships with decent men mature men good men men that lead men that work men that make decisions for their household they can't shut up they can't get into that woman space around this man because guess what i'm only used to seeing my mama run shit. right i'm only used to my aunties my mama my grandmas and them running shit. i'm watching them handle my older brothers my younger brothers i'm watching my uncle go to my grandma mom you could do this i'm watching the effects of single mothering and i'm modeling it. it's programmed so when i do run across a man in a relationship even if i wanted to work with this guy that shit gonna that independent shit is gonna come out like a disease yeah. until you intentionally attack it and change that shit by changing your program, your programming through repetition. And what she's saying right there is very important because yes, men do, most men do appreciate a woman who's ambitious, who's a self-starter, who is, a, if for all intents and purposes, a boss chick. But when you're in a household and in a relationship, the man still wants to be the leader. Now, it's not just the women who have to understand how to turn that off or turn it down or adjust between the two uh, dynamics when they're dealing with their man, it's also on us men to create an environment where a woman who is that of that, who is always being that boss chick is comfortable being in her femininity. If you out here claiming that you a man, claiming that you are a leader in a household, but you're not moving accordingly, then you're not creating that environment. And then you get upset and frustrated when she's still being that boss chick all the time, but you don't know why. And I would challenge you, men, if you're, if you're feeling that way, you gotta look in the mirror. You gotta say, look, what am I doing? What behaviors am I exhibiting? What energy am I giving that is keeping her or discouraging her from relinquishing and falling into femininity? What is it, if I, am I creating a space where she can do that comfortably? Or am I just saying, I need you to be this feminine woman. I need you to stop this. I need you to do that. Are we, be, are we just saying what we want? and not living that life? Or are we just saying, or are we creating the space for her to get comfortable enough to do that? Yes, it requires time. Yes, it requires an adjustment on both sides. Both of you have to have the conversation, as I said before, and talk about it and understand where she's coming from. This is where communication plays a big factor, gentlemen. You gotta talk to your woman and find out what she's dealt with. You gotta move past the present. You, gotta, you can't be afraid to dig into her past. And you also can't be afraid to be vulnerable enough to share with her about your past. You got, you both have to understand what you've both been through, what you've dealt with, so you understand how to go forward. If you come from a situation where you were abused and abused in your previous relationships, where you got, where women were taking advantage of you and you were breaking your bank, trying to take care of them and all this kind of stuff, that's gonna have an effect on you emotionally. And it's gonna make you very insecure probably. It's gonna have you be very hesitant and, re and, and, and resistant to 
being that person who takes the lead in such in those situations or who wants to pay for this or who wants to work for that because you're nervous about being taken advantage of. Same thing with her. You don't know what she's had to deal with in her past, but you got to ask the questions. We all have paths and we take for granted how much of an effect our past has on who we are today. We have little behaviors that we don't even think about that we're doing that are a direct result of something we went through before. And this is the part where taking care of your mental health is very important. Recognizing that you have dealt with things that you haven't resolved, you may believe you resolved them, but you haven't. And sitting down with a professional who can talk to you and take you through the steps to get you to see and reveal the things you may not have even thought was going on, but understanding that how they're playing a factor in everything you're dealing with. Going through therapy for me has have pointed out a great many things that I was doing that was creating environments that my woman couldn't be comfortable in or bringing up insecurities that I had not resolved or self-esteem issues that I had to, had to deal with and look back and be honest with myself and get my ego out of the way and really focus on those things. Taking care of your mental is very important, gentlemen, very important. I know we stress that a lot here, but I feel like it bears repeating. If you can't get right, then you can't expect anyone else to follow you gonna get right. You gotta be able to have yourself taken care of first before you can lead anybody else. For a young boys, you get to a certain age, and again, it ain't, like I said on the video, it's not a certain numerical age. It is, there is something that happens in y'all upbringing through pu puberty or you, you know, going through your little adolescent stage where y'all realize I'm a man. And then you realize what the world expect men to be. Yeah. And then you realize I'm being raised by a woman. And then you realize like, there is this thing with my ego where I don't like being fussed at from a space of disappointing a woman. Yeah. Cause men don't like to disappoint a woman right. they care about, right? But from a single mother space, we fuss a lot at boys. And it cripples the fuck out of y'all's psyche in regards to the emotional side. So a lot of times men don't realize they go and repeat the same by picking a woman that handles them or fusses at them or deals with them a certain way and they shut down. Yeah. I talked to a lot of mothers of teenage boys and these dudes like they can't get their son to open up and really talk to them. They walk around with their hoodies on in 90 degree weather, just kind of sticking to themselves, listening to the music. And that's what's beginning to raise their mindset because it's like, there's nothing in here reflective of helping me become a man. I know this, but in the black community, you can't even say that to your mama. Right. You or them, they'll get called disrespectful. But I know it's something missing here. I can't really say it to her. She doing the best that she can, yeah. do you know what I mean? And she almost sensitive and triggered about anything I bring up that I need that she can't give me. So you kind of, you know, you, you suppress it. Yeah. Then now you're a grown man. And let's say you come across a good woman and she trying to get you to open up, you know, express your feelings and shit like that. You don't know if you're going or coming and when you do open up and come out like a bitch. And that's another thing that men talk about a lot is not having the space in the, to be able to be vulnerable like that, to share, the, to talk about emotions and, and reveal how they feel because men are inherently apprehensive to doing those things because all too often we've seen where women take that information and weaponize it. And that makes us very leery about doing any kind of sharing of any kind because as soon as you try to tell your woman that you stressed out about work or you got something going on or money's funny and you, you you're really worrying about this kind of this that and the third you have to deal with oh that's not you're not being a man oh i need you to be a man i need you to stand up and do it not understanding that we're just expressing how we feel right now it's no need to attack our masculinity because we have feelings i think that society i'm sorry i think i'm pretty confident society has indoctrinated the way women view men and we're only seen as supposed to be just machines that produce. We're not allowed to have emotions. We're not allowed to have feelings. We're not allowed to be people. Our, our purpose for being here is for reproduction and provision. That's it. And, and when you keep pushing that narrative, as you see on a lot of these videos, where women are saying that that's all that a man is worth, or that's all men are worth is that, it, sends, it sets up the world where men don't feel they're seen, so they act accordingly. And yes, we're not supposed to show our emotions by the way things are set up in society, but that doesn't mean that emotions don't exist. And a woman that takes the time to understand her man mentally, emotionally, and physically is gonna be a lot happier in the relationship she has and vice versa for the man who does the same for his woman. Because if you both have an understanding that you're both are human and treat each other as such, allowing space for mistakes, obviously not catastrophic ones, I mean, come on now, but allow space for mistakes, allow her to be a human and she do the same in return, you're going to find a more fulfilling relationship. 
but ego is getting the way and we get so focused on what we want and how we want it and we got to have control over everything and if you're not meeting my standard or meeting what i want getting give me what i want then you're not a man or if you can't follow my my direction you're not a woman it's funny because i talked about this earlier um in a discussion i was having you know you you take a lot of these young teenagers and stuff like that they're fully developed height build and everything yeah. by 15 16 yeah. years old yeah. and then you just fussing at them you just fussing at them right. you, and i ain't saying they ain't fucking up i ain't even saying that but men should have been came into the picture and took over with influence yeah the problem and the reason why like i'll go back to what i said about the statistics as single mothers, we produce the worst product is because at some point we have to pass the torch over to men. And back in the day, this was understood. You know what I mean? You get to a certain age, mama's sending you out to go cut grass with Mr. Earl down the street. They got the lawn service or they take your ass up to the barbershop after school to go to Mr. Dave's barbershop and sweep up hair and listen to men. They understood, let me get some men influencing you. That shit is missing and even educators tell me all the time because I get DMs, I connect with people that work in the school system and they talk about how, you know, as, as single mothers, it's a, a triggering space for us to hear about the shortcomings socially and intellectually in our children. So you can't tell them shit. Mm. We don't want to hear shit about our babies. So when somebody tell you, hey, your son is playing this, this, and this, oh, yeah. it's like you damn near offending them. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Instead of them getting that information and moving on it and getting with the guidance counselor. So now it's like a block put up where can't nobody influence the children but them. We got to start admitting we don't yeah. have enough tools and skills as women to make no fucking man a man. He got to yeah. get that from men. So you got to get mentors. You got to get them in programs, get them in groups and social circles where men are able to tell them something without you putting your womanly influence or two cents on it. Right. We live in a day and age where educators are now not only having to be teachers, but also surrogate parents. And all too often we have these situations where these children who are allowed to just do whatever they're going to do and they send them to school and they get sent to school and the teachers can't get hold of the kids because they don't have any respect for authority, period. They're already allowed to run around and do whatever they want because they don't have the right influences in their lives at home. Or well, they're not getting the right discipline at home. And then the, the parents, rather than frustrated with the child, send them to school thinking that it's a teacher's job to now raise your kid, to now discipline your kid, to get your child's behavior in check. You got to stop passing the buck on to the education system and take responsibility for what you can control in your own household. As you pointed out, you got to go find mentorship programs. You got to find big brothers of America, whatever the case it may be. You got to get them into, into community programs where they can be around other men to receive that influence, to receive some kind of guidance, to see what it means to be a man. Because when they get to that age of between 12 and 14, 16 years old, that's when they really smell themselves. And you really got to put them in the right environment. Otherwise, they're going to go all the way off the Richter and do something crazy because you can't. They don't want to be told what to do already. They think they got all the answers, but the only way they're going to find out is by going through and meeting other men and understanding what it means to be a man. Thank God for mentorship programs, because those things are very helpful in getting men in the right spaces or young men in the right spaces, I should say, so they can be around the right influences and learn what it takes to be a man. This was a great conversation. Shout out to Dirty Glove Bastard and his off the porch interview series where he's having these kinds of discussions that need to be had and getting these topics addressed properly. Now listen, I know that it goes without saying, but I feel like I need to say it. I really appreciate you taking time to watch this video and st spend this time with me. I know how precious your minutes are and I wanna make sure you guys get what you need, get the information you're looking for, have the conversations you wanna have, so please don't forget to leave a comment down below. Let me know what you want to talk about, what you have questions about. I want to try to cater more to more what you're looking for and understanding that is only through you giving me feedback. And for those of you that have not subscribed, and I know y'all out there, I'm hoping that this video has convinced you that the kind of information that we're putting out, the kind of conversations we're having, the discussions are relevant to what you're going through and will help you to understand that you're not alone out here. What you're dealing with is not something that's unheard of. You're not by yourself. There are solutions. And when we talk about these conversations, we discuss, we keep, we tend to make sure we stay solution focused over here. If you're looking for that ratchet drama, back and forth, argumentative, you know, no, no points being made, just yelling back and forth kind of conversation. That's not what you're going to get here. I'm not here to bash women or bash men for that matter. What I am here to do is show you that 
there is a path going forward that we can be the leaders we're meant to be. We can retake our position in the communities that we want to have by controlling the narrative, but understanding first and foremost that it starts with us. And if we don't take that and understand that fully comprehend it and put it into action, we're going to keep seeing the same results. So thank you again for watching. I hope you stick around, check out these videos over here. We go into more discussions of the same kind of conversation and you'll join me over there. Until next time, be well.